Human beings are social animals, and for survival, engage in lots of give and take. To make the give and take easier, everything is assigned a value based on supply and demand, and that formed the basis of barter system. Australia's indigenous population used a trading system based on barter. Items such as food, weapons, tools, natural resources, and items made from animals and plants were readily traded. Aboriginal group exchanged natural resources, such as ochres and tools, stone axes and boomerangs, thus creating extensive trading networks. Goods travelled hundreds of kilometres from their original source. For example, boomerangs made in Central Australians would find their way to Arnhem Land and the surrounding islands. Didgeridoos from Arnhem Land would find their way down to Central Australia. Pearl shells from the Kimberley were traded through Central Australia down into South Australia. After more than 40,000 years of Aboriginal occupation of Australia, the Europeans descended on Australian soil in 1788 to settle and flourish here. The first fleet arrived with no money system established for the new home. Soldiers and sailors were given all of their supplies for free from government stores, and convicts were not given any money because they were transported as punishment. When the first fleet arrived in Sydney Cove in 1788, it brought with it only 300 pounds held by Captain Arthur Phillip, and whatever random coins were in the pockets and purses of passengers. They came with no currency, as there were no businesses or shops in Australia at that time. Rum, corn, and wheat were the principal things used as currency, and from the beginning rum was the great circulating medium. The wages of Laboris were set down as so many gallons of rum, rewards were paid in it, and it is actually on record that a wife was purchased from her husband for four gallons of rum. When Governor King took over command in 1800, he was startled to learn how varying and exorbitant was the value of this commodity. He found that spirit, which had been imported for 10 shillings a gallon, was being retailed for two pounds. Everybody traded in it. Even the construction of the church was partly paid for in rum. The New South Wales Corps, also known as the, the Rum Corps, was formed in England in 1789 as a permanent regiment of the British Army to relieve the New South Wales Marine Corps, who had accompanied the first fleet to Australia in garrisoning the colony of New South Wales. It gained notoriety for its trade in rum and disobedient behaviour during its service and was disbanded in 1818. William Bly, who does not drink, arrived in New South Wales in 1806 and immediately set about to curb the use of rum as a currency and to limit the power of existing and past members of the Rum Corps. Naturally this met with resistance from the Corps and from the wealthiest man in the colony, John MacArthur. After more than a year of power play, MacArthur and the Rum Corps prevail. Bly is deposed of office exactly 20 years after the establishment of the colony. It is the only military insurrection in Australia's history. Two years of military rule ensued. However, word of the chaos reached the British colonial office, which ordered both Johnson and MacArthur to be arrested and sent to England for trial. The Marine Corps was recalled in 1810, and the same year, Governor Lachlan Macquarie arrived. He was finally successful in curbing the trade in rum. In those early days, rum was imported from the West Indies, and more commonly, from India. Jamaica rum was highly prized, but most imports were Bengal rum. After settlers spent many years using foreign coins collected in their earlier travels, for buying, commodities in Australia, on the 19th of November 1800, Governor Philip Gidley King of New South Wales proclaimed 10 international coins for use in Australia. This set their value, allowing much easier trading. For example, one Spanish dollar was now worth five shillings compared to an English guinea, which was worth one pound and two shillings. This brought some relief and stability to the colony, at least for a short time. At the beginning of the 19th century the Spanish dollar, worth about five shillings, had become a world medium of exchange. It was described by Governor Brisbane as an invaluable coin. In 1813, 
Governor Lachlan Macquarie of New South Wales imported 40,000 Spanish dollars and employed convicted coin forger William Henshall to punch a circle out of the middle of each coin. This resulted in two new, local coins, the dump, the piece which was removed from the centre, and the holy dollar, the ring-shaped outer piece. Thus was the famous holy dollar born and promptly nicknamed. It was not long before counterfeit holy dollars began to make their appearance, and in 1821 the Bank of New South Wales found it necessary to issue an urgent warning to the public to beware of such spurious coinage. However, up to the end of 1828 Macquarie's quaint coins continued in circulation, though at a considerably reduced value. In 1825, the British government passed the Sterling Silver Currency Act, making the British pound the only legal currency in Australian colonies. 30,000 pounds in English coins was imported. This, however, was still not enough to go around, and many people still used other forms of currency to get by. A general order of December 16, 1828, made a beginning of the end for the holy dollar, when it stated that ring dollars would be received at the colonial treasury in exchange for bills. In September, 1842, an act of the local legislature decreed that after the 1st of October foreign coins should cease to be legal tender in Australia. In 1849, gold was discovered in Australia, leading to the gold rush taking over many people's lives by 1851. Valuable material was dug out of Australian soil, and the need to make this gold into coins became clear. In 1852, while others in Australia were waiting for permission from England to have an official mint, the Adelaide Assay Office opened. South Australia was almost bankrupt because many people had left Adelaide for the gold fields, taking the colony's money with them. The office bought gold from people, turning it into ingots which were stamped with their weight and purity. Ingots were then given to banks, which could release notes to the value of the gold. Later in the year, the SA office made one pound tokens. The office could not keep up with the demand and was not legally sanctioned, and it was closed down on the 17th of February 1853. In 1855, the Sydney Mint was opened, operating as a branch of the Royal Mint in London. The Mint produced gold coins known as sovereigns. In 1872, the Melbourne Mint was opened, operating as a branch of the Royal Mint in London. In 1899, the Perth Mint opened, initially operating as a branch of the Royal Mint in London, it is now wholly owned by the Western Australian Government, specialising in gold collector coins and bullion. Australia federated on 1 January 1901, and the need for a national currency was promptly raised. G. B. Edwards, member for South Sydney addressed the Federal Parliament proposing a committee to establish a Commonwealth currency with a decimal system. The committee's recommendations were presented to Parliament and passed, but the government was not keen to adopt decimal currency unless Britain did the same thing. In 1910, nine years after federating, national Australian coins were struck, based on the British system of pounds, shillings and pence. Between 1919 to 1921, test pieces were struck, experimenting with the use of cupro nickel, the alloy used in today's silver-coloured coins, to replace the bulky copper penny and halfpenny pieces. While these were not adopted by the government, the 1920 square penny and the 1921 square half penny remain a valued part of the national coin collection. In 1959, after much lobbying, the Australian government formed the Decimal Currency Committee to establish recommendations for a new money system. On 30 October 1963, the Currency Act became law, paving the way for decimal currency, and on 14 February 1966 Australia converted to decimal currency. Modern polymer banknotes were first developed by the Reserve Bank of Australia, RBA, Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation, CSIRO, and the University of Melbourne. They were first issued as currency in Australia in 1988, coinciding with Australia's bicentennial year.